uh, is do you see it properly there uh, okay great thanks so uh, I'm gonna state this question and try to answer very quickly Provo it's a provocation can designers change systemic oppression I'm gonna touch upon some issues that have been raised by previous panelists however framing it uh, from the perspective of the global south and particularly Latin America uh, uh, school of thought on systemic oppression. The three questions uh, that are required to answer this major one is what is oppression, why is it systemic, and what can designers do? Um, I'm going to summarize graphically the theory of uh, ontological vocation of human beings or uh, theory of um, human development and liberation from uh, Franz Fanon, Alvaro Vieira Pinto, Paulo Freire, Augusto Ball, and other authors. They basically state that human beings are born to become more, to develop further. And they have this expansive nature. They try to challenge themselves and develop, doing new things and uh, becoming something that they are more than already are. However, due to some, to some specific historical conditions, they are oppressed. And oppression is a social relation that curtails this ontological vocation. So instead of having this being more um, uh, movement, this forces uh, coming from the being towards the world, it's the opposite. The world uh, pushes back the being to become less than it was possible to be. Uh, sometimes this less than human being is also called a thing. If it's treated like an instrument by another human being who is an oppressor. And to understand oppression, uh, we require uh, another kind of a graphic that shows the re social relation, the two different kinds of uh, groups that are uh, related uh, in this historical situation. Usually the oppressed uh, social groups, they are um, less than human, uh, women, indigenous, black, immigrants, disabled, users, and many other kinds of social groups are created by the oppressors to manage uh, the oppressed and to justify why do they need the oppressors. So who are the oppressors? Well, they are the ones who are basically uh, um, concentrating the privileges. They are humans, they are men, they are colonizers, they are white citizens, able people, designers, and so on. Um, to put it graphically, this uh, relationship, this double relationship, uh, one and the other one, uh, you see on the left side the oppressor, and the human, who states, I am the human, and the on the right side is there is the oppressed, who has to hear what the oppressor says. And the oppressor says, you are not human, or at least you lack some kind of humanity, and I can exchange that humanity for something that you are producing that uh, pertains to me, for example, a natural resource, I can exchange for a manufacturer, a designed product, and so that you, the oppressed can humanize. So this being more of the oppressed is um, uh, 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 pulled into the oppressor and uh, it doesn't return back to the oppressor. Instead, uh, what the oppressed uh, receives is a being less, uh, it's a, a product that is a, a testimony that the oppressed lacks something because it's ready made and it does not take into account uh, the oppressed uh, history, needs and uh, capabilities. What happens uh, in the long run is that the oppressor ends up developing much more than the oppressed in this unequal exchange. And therefore, the oppressor starts to define the standard for being human, for humanizing and becoming human. And the consequences of oppression in design is that we understand design as if it was a way of humanizing our world, but these worlds are so different because the oppressed and the oppressors, they are uh, designing differently their worlds. And if I use uh, crayon, um, example of an AI generated image generator machine that's currently widely available and I type design developed nations and I type design in, the, uh, in, the, in underdeveloped nations you see it's stark in difference you usually look at undeveloped nations as not having design and you look at these pictures of slums and you think these are not designed but they are designed 
they are, but they are pressed designs. They are designs that are considered to be inferior. However, uh, in, the, in the overall picture, if you look at the numbers, you will see that developed design, uh, the design done in developed nations has a much larger uh, carbon emission footprint, for example, than uh, on the right side. Oh, these uh, slums on the long run, uh, in the big picture, they have a much slow and smaller uh, footprint. The things that usually the garbage that you see in the slums, they come directly from design developed nations. They are exporting the garbage and therefore the design in developed nations look like, looks like that, oppressed. But then if you look critically into that, you uh, completely change your perspective. So what it, why is this op uh, considered to be systemic? Well, it's because the oppressed uh, typically reproduces oppression towards another social group and it becomes the same person who is an oppressed in one relation can become an oppressor in another. For example, um, a male worker can be an op oppressor towards uh, a female uh, companion uh, because uh, this uh, oppression relations, they are interconnected. You cannot uh, look at class uh, oppression without looking at gender, without looking at race. And, and the oppressed then starts to uh, wanting to become like the oppressor because the oppressor is the standard for being human. So being powerful and being reckless towards others, that's the standard that the oppressor builds in, uh, in our subjective feeling and also in our culture. That can be exemplified concretely with this uh, nice painting by Richard Sargent, Anger Transference. So you see uh, the boss yelling at the employee the employee comes back home and yells at at his wife and then the wife yells at his her children and then the children yells at the the cat and this is nice to understand a simplified way of understanding oppression as being systemic in a, in a kind of a, a loop that reinforces each other however there's something missing here the press there's a lack of diversity of different kind of oppression because you see mostly white people in the picture and that's something that uh, black feminists in the United States have uh, done quite some work on uh, developing this intersectional feminist uh, perspective of oppression where uh, the oppressed is not only oppressed by one relationship but by multiple as if it was in a in a road uh, intersecting road and so many cars were trespassing and threatening the life of the oppressed Kimberly Crenshaw, Patricia Lee Collins, Bell Hooks, Angela, Angela Davis, they all wrote about how, uh, for example, a lesbian, black woman, uh, unemployed, has suffered much more in, from oppression than a, a white man like me in Brazil. However, this has uh, uh, a larger impact. If you look, for example, uh, if you put an environment in the, into the equation, you see that uh, inter uh, the intersections of oppression also affects back the oppressors uh, in this systemic loop and the oppressors use their advantages to adapt and to anticipate, for example, environmental damages to, and to uh, shield them from uh, environmental issues and, 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 and instability. And this has been uh, shown by several research, I'm just picking one here, uh, that says um, residential segregation, which is uh, an outcome of uh, social inequality, which is, can be explained through uh, oppression theory, uh, causes resources distribution inequality, so that these people, uh, they need to, for example, to eat uh, food that is more impactful to the environment, that's heavier, that produces more garbage, and then the landscape changes, becomes less heterogeneous, and that has an impact on the biological diversity, which also affects the oppressors. However, the oppressors, they can build parks in their neighborhoods, they can uh, send their, uh, their children to the moon or to Mars, colonize another world. And that, that's, that's how we are dealing right now with environmental issues. We are usually not considering oppressing relations, but recently, especially due to uh, black movements and the uh, criticism to environmental racism, this is being taken into account. But how do we get out of oppression? What is the, the, uh, the part that's uh, proposing the different uh, actions towards it in this theory? Well, the liberation theory says that oppressed 
can only uh, counter the oppressor if they reject that standard of humanizing and become more for their own sake. If they uh, don't want to become like the oppressor, to have the same kind of standard of consumption, and if they don't want to be the same as the oppressors. What can designers do then in this uh, liberation fight? Well, take a look again at these classifications that I showed uh, before. Uh, in the last row, you see that designers are on the oppressor side, while users are on the uh, oppressed side. Yes, that's hard to uh, admit, but designers are already systemically oppressing users if they are designing for them. Uh, that's a uh, very provocative finding from our research on uh, user oppression, human-computer interaction. You can check this paper later on. I don't have enough time to go into details. But like, to summarize, if you reduce a person uh, uh, that has this being more voca ontological vocation to become only a user of anything that you are designing, be that a service, a technology, an interface, or whatsoever, if you consider that person cannot design that thing that you're doing, you are oppressing that person. Yeah, so there is not much you can do against oppression on the oppressor side. It's, you cannot uh, fight oppression as a designer and only as a designer. You need to side with the oppressed to fight oppression. You need to side with the users and also the other kinds of oppressed that I've shown before. But uh, bear in mind that you are also oppressed. You have to find uh, which kind of groups that you are uh, that is also oppressed so that you can be the, make a bridge on an analogy to the oppressed situation of the ones who are, you want to work with. And for example, just to give a, uh, you a glimpse on how this can uh, happen, how do you can you realize that design workers are oppressed, not because they are designers, but because they are workers in a capitalist work exploitation relation. Uh, so do our women designers. They are oppressed not because they are designing, but because they are women and also workers. Women in a sexist society. Well, then my suggestion and what we are trying in the Laboratory of Design uh, Against Oppression, LATO at the University, uh, at the Federal University of Technology, Paraná, is joining the oppressed as an oppressed, not as an almighty Deus signer that can save them. Deus signer is a word that you use a lot here in Brazil because the word God is Deus in, in Portuguese, and the designer will be the God signer that knows everything that has this marvelous system thinking a, approach to solve uh, wicked problems. That's not the way uh, you can fight oppression. In this way, you will oppress instead of uh, liberating. To liberate, you have to join the fights that are already going on by the oppressed themselves. So we join Uniperifa, which is a, a group of um, peripheral uh, um, students and activists who want live in the outskirts of Curitiba city and they want to bring these uh, students to the universities, the public universities, and they are working with universities like us um, so that uh, students become more conscious of the importance for their communities for them to have higher education. And we had this marvelous uh, co-design workshop with a uh, condominium with a uh, condominium Guasu um, uh, inhabitants. Uh, they are some of, of them are part of this Uniperifa movement, and we uh, design community actions together. And while looking at uh, the map we designed, we did notice that there were several sustainability issues. For example, uh, ga uh, garbage collection that uh, the the mayor uh, and the city didn't want to take care of, and they had to convince uh, the the inhabitants of the that uh, residential area that they needed to organize and to press city hall so that they would do a garbage collection. But that would take uh, organizing that they lack because they were oppressed. They were separating to those groups. They thought that they have they didn't have anything in common. Therefore, we decided we had to focus on the community center to start um, moving things around. And we uh, organized this co uh, community center renovation and our design students joined the community members uh, to paint and to fix uh, what was uh, broken in that community center to uh, uh, work as a symbol for the community that things were becoming to change, that they could be part of that change. They were already part of that change. We just needed to uh, join forces and do the work.
So that's a very simple example of uh, how our uh, design students, they are learning how to um, change systemic oppressions little by little, joining the oppressed, right? And, and, and designing and making things with the oppressed, by the oppressed and for the oppressed so that they can become conscious of their role in this uh, social relationship. They can understand that sometimes they are oppressing, but they can join the oppressed and stop oppressing and fight for their liberation. That's it. Thank you very much.